Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies and welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a bit of a treat for you. We are once again revisiting the topic of porpoising. In particular, what we're going to be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a hands-on case study. And what this tutorial is, is this is a complement to my later, one of my latest race car engineering articles where I go through and I, and I walk you through step by step about what to do in terms of how to approach porpoising. But the difference here is that what I've discussed with other tutorials has been, been sort of hinting to live race cars. And because I'm hinting to live customer cars, I'm really not at liberty to speak about the numbers. However, what I've done here is introduced a case study where I can speak about the numbers. So let's get started. Okay, as we all know, porpoising is a problem that all high downforce cars are susceptible to. And again, just to reiterate, the focus of this car will be a hands-on study. That being said though, let me give you this apology in advance. Because of the fact that this is a video presentation, I'm not gonna be able to dive into this, into the depth that I would in um, the, that I did in my race car engineering article. That being said, what the goal for today is to give you guys a framework so that when you encounter this on your own race cars, that you know that this uh, that I do step one, step two, step three, step four to resolve the issue. So let's get started. Okay, so in order to kick this discussion uh, to kick this discussion off, what we need to discuss is the hard one of the hard limits in when we deal with porpoising, and a very key limit that we deal with in porpoising is actually the tyre spring rate. So if we take a look at our quarter car vehicle model, we've got our body mass, we've got our um, platform spring rate, damper rate, we've got our unsprung mass, and we've got our tyre spring rate here. Now the nail here, ladies and gentlemen, is that if that tyre spring rate is effectively a marshmallow, there's not terribly much you can do. And indeed, to quote the Australian vernacular, you're pretty much stuffed if you're dealing with very, very low tire spring rate. So that's a very, very key hard limit that you're going to be approached with whenever, you appro whenever you're approached with a porpoising problem. Now, to explore this a little bit further, if we take a look, our equivalent spring rates, that is, if we lump in our platform and tire spring rate into a single spring, is going to be the, um, the, uh, the multiple of our body rate times our spring rate, divided by the sum of both the body and the spring rate. So, the, uh, But the real takeaway here is the percentage of body movement is going to be given to you by the tyre spring rate divided by the sum of the body spring rate and the tyre spring rate. The nail here is, ladies and gentlemen, is as you can see by this divisor here, if the tyre spring rate is really, really low, then pretty much... And, you, and, you, and particularly if you're dealing with large numbers of downforce, your hands pretty much get tight. What I want you guys to do, so I just want you to park, uh, to park that thought. Now we're going to introduce the case study that we're dealing with. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Chassis Sim GP2 F2 template. And what we're going to do is we're going to effect, uh, effectively throw in a lot more downforce. So bottom line, we're dealing with a target downforce of about CLA of about 6. Aero balance in the front axle is going to be about 45%. So is the weight distribution. And the real key thing to note here is that we're targeting a static front right height of 70 mil, a rear right height of 80 mil. But the key thing to note here, I would draw your attention to that front tire spring rate, 220 newtons per millimeter. That is going to come back to affect us quite profoundly, but I want you to park that for the time being. The other thing too is just to also illustrate what we're dealing with is here's the arrow map that we're dealing with. Now, what I've done is I've normalized this error map, and in order to get the actual CLA numbers, you just simply need to multiply that by the global number of six that we discussed in the table before. That being said, while this is not a porpoising error map in the strictest sense, what this, uh, what this error map does have is a lot of error-induced oscillation. So consequently, it forms a really good basis for our case study because you're going to have a lot of aero-induced oscillation in the platform. So, the first things first we've got to do is we've got to determine the spring rates we need to fit to the car. And in order to do that, we need to figure out our limiting case. Now, in the race car engineering article, 
I walked you through a couple of case studies to identify that limit case. And that limit case was basically your end of um, straight condition, which was about 300 or so kilometers an hour. And here you can see the downforce numbers that pertain to that. But the, uh, uh, but um, the nail that you're um, dealing uh, the nail that you're um, dealing with here is that bottom line you're going to be dealing. Uh, with about 26 mil of deflection on the front tire and 26 millimeter at the rear tire. Now they are hard constants that you cannot get around because that's all hardwired into the spring stiffness of the tires. Now, in terms of choosing the damping um, deflections that you need to correspond with that, that's going to be a function of a couple of things. Number one, the um, uh, you take a look at your static ride heights versus your tire deflections. And you simply subtract that. Uh, you, su you simply subtract those um, two to figure out. Okay, this is the amount of spring rate that um, we can run at. But the other thing too is the other thing that also kicks into it is the amount of spring you need to heat up the tire. But more importantly, particularly for an aero car, is that you'll notice in this aero map back here, this car has a very very tight band of air, uh, a tight band of front aero where the car will actually work. So consequently. Given all that, we're going to place a limit of about 10 millimeters in terms of front damper deflection and 20 millimeters of rear damper deflection. That's going to be our target that we want to design to. Now, I go more into depth of that in the race car engineering article, but the nail here is bottom line, the curbs get a vote too. So that's what we're dealing with. So given that we're dealing with this, we now need to figure out what our effective spring rates are. And again, we take a look at our limit condition. And so at the front, we're dealing with an effective spring rate of 574.2 newtons per millimeter, and that's measured at the wheel. And, the, and because all of our motion ratios are one, effectively this is a wheel rate anyway, so it's a moot point. Our spring, uh, our, uh, spring rate at the rear is 350.9 newtons per millimeter. Now, remember, this is our rough rule of thumb. This is our first pass to go, yep, this is what we're after. Now, one of the things I delved deeply into um, the article was um, where we would land in terms of spring rate. Now, if we take a look at our base spring rate for the car, it was about 330 newtons per millimeter. And in the article, I just figured, you know what, we'll stick with that because we can always compensate with a bump rubber that it can hit um, going down the straight to make sure that, um, we keep, uh, uh, that we keep the car from bottoming out. Where our real work was going to be is the front is um, the front um, is going to be the front spring rate and hitting that number. Now, this is where you need to go through and be very careful and deliberate about selecting your bump rubber rate. But the nail here is that when you are specking your dampers, you need to specify your damper at the spring rate at which you're going to be spending the bulk of your amount of time with. Now, because of the fact that this is a high downforce car. We're going to be into that bump rubber quite a bit. So consequently, given all that, we're going to choose a spring rate of 520 newtons per millimeter at the front and 330 newtons per millimeter at the rear. So once we have got that, and again, let me be um, very, very clear in this, where we're using a mainspring car with, um, uh, with no third spring. My apologies, I should have clarified that a little bit earlier. Given all that, we can now go through and determine our base damping rates. Now, the, the specifics on how you calculate that, I have pretty much done to death um, on the chassis and damp workbook and in the tutorial damp of workbook live. But the nail here is that based on the quarter car model, uh, the quarter car um, model approximation, you're looking at about uh, 19, um, 349.4 newtons per millimetres per second at the front and about 17,000 newtons per millimetres per second at the rear. And what we're going to do is that we are going to use the Shaker Rig Toolbox to firm up these details. Okay, damper spec, the Shaker Rig Toolbox. This is where the Shaker Rig Tool, the Shasim Shaker Rig Toolbox comes into its own. So as you can see here, I've given you a complete log of what I've actually done. So a couple of things to note. Note how the rear CPL actually dropped once we got that aero platform under control. You can see that um, in run two. But ultimately, where the choice of damper was very much solidified was if we take a look at our um, at uh, if we take a look at um, row ten, you'll see that the um, uh, you'll see the cross pitch mode drop, drops quite a bit. That was pretty much the final endpoint about 
where we uh, about where we said right boom this is the damn perspective we need to be at so to walk you through what that is this is the final front damper specification so take a look at the numbers we landed so we pretty much landed at damping ratios of about one for the low speed and we we're about half to about 0.4 for the high speed but one thing i want to point out you'll see here that i've been a little bit generous in the bypass i mean Strictly speaking, with the bypass for a car like this, you should be around about 20 to 30 newtons per millimetres per second. I went to about 50. Why? Number one, I'm at Eastern Creek, so by European standards, it's relatively bumpy. It's not a go track. It's not a go track by any means, but it's still relatively bumpy. So I needed something where the car could still lean on the platform, but not overkill in terms of the fact that I was applying too much in the low speed. Um, and therefore sacrificing the behavior over the bump. So that's why the bypass landed at 50, mil 50 millimeters per second. In terms of the rear dampers, you'll see that I pretty much use a damping ratio of one for both the low speed and the high speed. In particular, take a look at the, high, uh, uh, take a look at the low speed rate and rebound. That was about 20,000 newtons per meters per second. That is all being driven by actually stabilizing, um, uh, 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 by stabilizing the platform. And these numbers, these damping ratios of about 0.4 or so, that's there to make sure that the car can actually ride the curbs. Let's take a look at the end result of this. So the baseline is colored. The end result with the updated dampers is in black. And as you can see, we're taking a look at our front and our rear pitches, which are our average front and rear dampers. We have some pretty considerable improvement in terms of the behavior of the platform. Again, with the ride heights, Again, we've had a step up, but not a massive step up. Why? That all goes back to how soft the front, how soft the front tire spring rate was, because we were only dealing with about 220 um, newtons um, per millimeter in terms of that um, spring rate. So while we have certainly moved things forward, it's not quite the night and day difference that you'd expect. And fundamentally, because you've got some hard limits in the actual car, what you've been given to, uh, uh, as to um, what you can work with. And sometimes when you are race engineering a car, you will be, de you'll be dealt with these hard limits to deal, uh, you'll be dealt with these hard um, limits to deal with. And that's just the nature of the game. So conclusions and key takeaways. So when dealing with porpoising, a key limit is the tire spring rate. Now we've used a combination of data, hand calculations, experience, simulations to determine where our damper curve needs to be. Now, the simulation tools that we use were the shaker rig and the lap time simulation. Now, the real key thing that I want, the real key thing to take away from this, ladies and gentlemen, is remember, when we are dealing with a highly aero-sensitive car, the control of the platform becomes absolutely paramount. And because of that, that virtually pushes you into high, uh, into, um, high, uh, into high values of damping rates for your low speed white, that's where the car needs to be controlled. But more importantly, what we've given you, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very clear framework in terms of how to approach that. And that framework is that we um, take a look at our limit case, we figure out what the tire deflection is. From the tire deflection, we make a choice about where we want our damper deflection to be. Once we've got our damper deflections, we can figure out what the tire spring rates need to be. And, uh, and in particular, we can figure what our bump rubber curves need to be. Once we know our bump rubber curves, we know the spring rates we are targeting. And from that, we can determine our base damping rates. And from that, using the shaker root toolbox, we can then refine our choice of, dam uh, uh, refine our choice of damper curve. Once you understand that, you have a very, very powerful tool in your hand. And at that point, let me conclude this tutorial. And we will catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.